Pokemon fans, Tanashi here. Last week I tackled my top 10 favorite gym leaders, and it was a lot of fun. This week I'm going to do the opposite and cover who I think are the worst gym leaders. This can be based on any number of criteria, from how well their characters developed, to how memorable they are, even to just their design and overall look. This isn't about who's the worst gym leader in battle, but rather just who I think is the worst constructed overall. I know I'm not going to make any friends with this list, because there's going to be some gym leaders on here that are pretty popular with a lot of people, so please try and remember that this is my opinion, and only my opinion, and that it's totally okay and understandable if you disagree. It never hurts to have a little reminder. With that said, let's dive right into my top 10 worst gym leaders. Number 10, Brock. I'm putting Brock low on this list because the reason I dislike him is pretty much entirely because of his anime adaptation, which breaks all the rules I set for my previous list, and it won't be a factor in the rest of my picks on this list either. Still, I have to let his anime incarnation color my perspective of him as an overall entity, simply because I find his anime counterpart so insufferably annoying. Hi, nice to meet you, I'm Brock, and I can't handle my hormones. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to make the exact same unfunny joke and sexually harass women for over 600 episodes. That's all there is to my character, and I'm going to be completely useless and annoying for my entire stay. Thanks for watching, please enjoy as I proceed to hit on anything that moves for all eternity. Bye bye I know a lot of people like him for being more of a mentor to Ash, and even found him funny, but while young children might enjoy the repetition, it gets really grating really fast for me as an adult, especially when dealing with guys like Brock in real life isn't funny at all. And even in the game, he's not a lot of fun to battle. The only way he's challenging at all is if you face him in the original Red and Blue with a Charmander, or you're really stubborn and don't catch anything besides Pikachu and Yellow, and then it's just completely unfair. He even has a burn heal in case you actually manage to burn his Geodude. It's just mean. Number 9, Winona. I actually don't dislike Winona as a character, I just feel like she doesn't really fit in with the style and setting of Hoenn and its other gym leaders. Aside from Wallace, who's supposed to be fabulous and stand out, the rest of the gym leaders are dressed in pretty casual everyday clothes. It makes the region of Hoenn feel more realistic, because the people there don't look too different from what you'd see in everyday life. It helps make the game more immersive, at least to me, because it helps me connect to the Hoenn region and its people. But Winona is dressed more like a typical fantasy character, like something you'd find in other JRPGs. And it's weird for her to stand out so much when she's not a major gym leader. Otherwise, she's fine. Her style doesn't even look bad. It just clashes with the rest of the game, and it bugs me a little. Number 8, 7, and 6, Byron, Candace, and Volkner. So, one of my biggest problems with Diamond and Pearl is that it's paced pretty poorly. It takes, I don't know, like, 12 hours between your 3rd and 4th gym badges, and once you get your 4th, it's rapid fire badge after badge after badge until the end of the game, which means the gyms towards the end of the game don't get a chance to stick out much. They're a complete blur to me which is why I'm putting the 6th through 8th gyms of the game in basically the same spot. I can't remember anything about any of them. I couldn't even remember what type Byron was, and I often forget that Volkner exists at all. And it's not for lack of playing the game. I played through Diamond and Pearl at least a dozen times, and I still forget so much about it because it's all a big mush at the end. Platinum thankfully fixes the pacing issues quite a bit, so don't necessarily hold the gyms in that game to the same criticism. But for Diamond and Pearl, Byron, Candace, and Volkner are completely forgettable to me. Number 5 and 4, Olympia and Wolfric. Unfortunately, since X and Y are paced almost exactly the same as Diamond and Pearl, this means the late game gym leaders in X and Y also kind of run together and become completely forgettable. I can't remember off the top of my head what the inside of Olympia's gym looks like as I'm writing this script, or what Pokemon she has. Wolfric is only a little bit more memorable because I had to rebattle him in the Chateau a couple times. Not everyone is going to share my experience, of course, so maybe some of you might remember them a little better. But with so few Pokemon, and such quick battles in such a short amount of time, I can't remember hardly anything about these two. Unlike the Gen 4 gym leaders, these guys have so few Pokemon their battles are over in a flash, which makes them even less memorable. Number 3, Claire. I don't know if it's just a coincidence, but every single female gym leader in Johto requires you to do something extra to get their badge, and by the time it got to Claire, it just got annoying. When you beat Claire, she throws a fit and won't accept her loss until you go to the Dragon's Den and complete a task for her. From Crystal onward, at least they make your quest to the Dragon's Den a little more interesting by making you take a test. But in the original games, she just wants you to go in there, find a dragon thing, and show it to her. Apparently, besting her in battle is less of a test of worthiness than a tiny scavenger hunt in a one-room cave. Jasmine at least wanted you to help a Pokemon in need, but Claire just has anger management problems, and I'm disappointed that there's only one likable female gym leader in all of Johto. Number 2, Whitney. So yeah, about that other unlikable female Johto gym leader. Whitney is, like, so totally annoying. She's the kind of kid who got into Pokemon when it was cool, but then as soon as it became uncool, she probably abandoned all her Pokemon, 
We made fun of the kids who still liked it. Okay, okay, so I'm projecting, like, a lot. But that's what she reminds me of. It doesn't help that she's completely unprofessional and a poor sport when she loses. And though I personally never had that much of a problem with her melting, I know a lot of people who hate her for that. For just the third gym leader in the game, it is kind of an unfair difficulty curve to give her a beast Pokemon like that Meltank, with both a recovery move and stacking damage. Both Claire and Whitney lack class and manners, but Whitney's whining is just that much more irritating. And my number one least favorite gym leader is... Marlin. Ugh, Marlin. In my top 10 favorite gym leaders, I mentioned how the Gen 5 games did a great job overall making their gym leaders fleshed out and developing them. Well... Unfortunately, some were handled better than others. First of all, the timing of Marlin's gym battle in the story makes absolutely zero sense. Hugh and the protagonist are in hot pursuit of Team Plasma, who had basically just committed a terrorist attack in Opelucid City. But then out of nowhere, and way out of character, Hugh is just like, okay, but first, you should stop and get a gym badge. Just cuz. So the momentum of the story is completely lost, and you're forced to arbitrarily earn this gym badge right now, even though it clearly would make more sense for you to keep chasing down Team Plasma. And then, if that wasn't bad enough, Marlin is just an awful, awful nonsensical character. His big thing is, but like, what do you believe in? Are you sure, like, that you're doing the right thing, man? Which, in a story like the first Black and White, would have been fine, because thematically it worked. But right now, in Black and White 2, Team Plasma is no longer operating under any sort of morally righteous guise. They literally just launched a terrorist attack and ice-bombed an entire city just because they wanted some DNA splicers. This isn't ambiguous, so Marlin's philosophizing here just comes off as completely condescending and dumb. Made worse by the fact that in Pokemon, you do not have a choice to act on what you think is the right thing to do. This is a completely linear story, and the player is not given any kind of meaningful choice in the situation. Thematically and narratively, Marlin makes zero sense, and overall he's just a pit stain on what's probably the worst main story of any Pokemon game. I still have Black and White 2 to death, but good grief do Hugh and Marlin belong in the trash. Thought about wraps up my top 10 worst gym leaders. Thanks for watching, and let me know who your least favorite gym leader is in the comments below. Really quickly, I just wanted to remind you that right now Tee Public is having a massive site-wide sale where all t-shirts are just $14. So if you're on the fence about one of my shirts because of the price, now's the time to swoop in and grab one. The sale ends on Sunday, so hurry fast. If you missed my top 10 gym leaders list from last week, you can click here to watch it. Or if you want to see a tour of my super secret base, you can click here. As always, don't forget to click here to subscribe for more Pokemon videos twice a week. See ya!